Number 13, Liam Stocker. I've been so excited to do this one. <laughs> I think 2021 will go down in the, the history books as the year, you know, the, the Carlton fans really got to see what he was all about and, and fall in love with him instantly. Um, we had seen a little glimpse of it in, in 2019 and we loved the fact that he was throwing his weight around and he had that competitiveness in him and we knew it was there, but, you know, we, we wanted to see it for a full season. And I think going into 2021, I... I just wasn't sure, like, is he okay? All that we knew and the information that we were told at the time was that he had left the hub for personal reasons. You know, um, the club did a a very good job of of making sure that he got his privacy and, and, you know, he did what he needed to to do for him. And subsequently, you know, in, you know, September of 2021, at the end of the season, he's, you know, he's done an interview with with Carlton Media and and really opened up about what he was going through and, and what he needed to do for himself. And, um it's just, it's, it's a big sigh of relief. Like selfishly as a fan, you know, obviously you want your players to play and, um, you know, he's going through what he's going through and you just want to see him play and, you know, footy's not everything in, in life. And, and that is a, that is a reality, you know, health is, is, is always number one. Um, and the fact that he needed to go away and do what he needed to do to get where he needed to be so that he could, you know, be who he is, um, is what I think the story of 2021 will be. Now, he, obviously he came in, he, played a role in defense and you know for the for the most part I think most of our reactions or mine anyway was nah this kid's a midfielder is a midfield beast we heard about it in the preseason Teague spoke about his competitiveness and they want to you know um, tap into that but he, he accepted a role and you know Luke Power came on the channel and, and did an interview with me and, and, and you know I asked him about players you know specifically guys like Stocker and, and Petrovsky Seaton who were playing you know out of position in the eyes of the fans and you know Luke Power made it very clear this is why we're doing it um it's not you know it's all good that you know you're drafted as a midfielder but in terms of the long-term development for a player you want to make sure that they're able to be versatile and it's it's good for them and then when you hear Liam Stocker talk about how he didn't care where he played he just wanted to earn the respect back from his teammates and and whatnot once you put that all together, you I, I have like a really clear understanding that this is what needs to happen. And, and sometimes, if not all the time, the fans like me, like you need to step back and, and let, you know, whatever is in our control is in our control. And that's really nothing. We just watch the games and, and hope for the best. Um, and you hope that the people on the inside are putting the pieces in the right place to develop in the right way. Um, at the end of the day, the attitude of Stocker and the willingness to do what was needed for the team and and, and just the way he played, the spirit he played with, um, the intensity he played with, his willingness to block for his teammates, um, his willingness to you know play a role that maybe isn't what he is naturally gifted at, um, but you know I think is, is important. Like guys like him and, and Matt Kennedy that just you know, didn't complain, just came in and did what they needed to do and, and didn't have a sense of entitlement, I think is crucial. Um, when you look at a guy like Petrovsky Seaton, who, you know, for the most part will say, you know, he didn't really adjust into that back line. Um, you know, Stocker, he found a way. He found a way to, to get better as, as the year went on. And I think his legs got, he, they got stronger as the year went on. Because I remember when he first started playing some of the kicking wasn't wasn't quite there from what I had seen, particularly in the VFL. I mean, the first time I'd watched him play a full game was that game um, at Icon Park. He had like 38 possessions and he was playing in the back line and um, he didn't have that same penetration in his kicking until probably two or three games into it. Once he got comfortable with you know, his spot in the side, you could really tell there was a real, there was a real change. And I feel like it probably came probably from that West Coast game onwards. He just was a lot more comfortable, started winning his own ball, um, you know, started creeping up into that 15, 16, 17 possession mark. And obviously with the the role that he was playing, it wasn't about possessions this year. It was about, you know, obviously he had an opponent. He was playing on some some dangerous small forwards, you know, Liam Ryan at times, Papley, um, Toby Green at times. And, you know, initially there was a little bit of frustration, but I think that's great for him. Uh, I think it's great for him. And, when he does go into the midfield eventually, which is what I assume will happen, you know, we will know that he has had a great apprenticeship beneath him and um, he needed to, to earn his keep. There was a frustration, I remember, at early in the season where I think he played against Melbourne, kicked his first goal, no one got around him. And that's where I, I really ask questions, not of stocks, but just of the group. Like, has he 
has he fit in? And you know, when I think back to the interview now after the season about him talking about earning respect of his teammates, um, you know, because he he obviously left last year and, and probably didn't tell everyone exactly what was going on. And you can probably see that's probably what happened. But again, as the year went on, they all they all seemed to to get around him a lot more than what they did. And I hope that 2021 is very much like Tom De Koning, you know, the springboard for 2022 and beyond. Big preseason for him. Um, he solidifies himself in the team, which is, I think, one of the best stories for us in 2021. I know we're frustrated. We didn't make finals. We didn't, we didn't win enough games uh, compared to what we wanted to. But there are little shining lights, and I think Liam Stocker is definitely one of them. And it's just good to have him playing, and it's it's good to see a bit of his personality and you know his mind. He's a brilliant, brilliant mind. He you know he's a deep thinker and. He's a critical thinker and, you know, he stands for something and, you know, he talks about having found his purpose. And I mean, when you hear that at his age, um, you know, that that's really reassuring. And I think what we'll start to see is more layers peeled back and we'll start to see, you know, potentially a, a captain or, or, a, or a leader of the club. I, I really think he's got those attributes. So let me know what you think. How did you see Stocker's season? Um, what do you want to see moving forward? Do we have to rush him back into the midfield or... Are you happy to just let the coaches do their thing and, and let Luke Power develop, you know, uh, Liam Stocker the way that he sees fit? We'll chat about it in the comments and go from there.